<laughs> Grant us, we ask, to speak, to hear, and to learn, so that our fears may be banished, our minds may become enlightened, our faith be increased, and our steps directed towards you. Amen. For those of you who are looking at this for the first time, and this thing came up here again, Those of you who are looking at this, uh, we want to thank um, thank Jay Valor for singing today. Jay is between uh, all kinds of uh, obligations, and um, he always gets us going. If you've never seen this before, look at us at www.allsoulsmiami.org. You're always welcome here. Now, I don't know how some of your minds work. I'm assuming they work a little bit more logically than mine, so I want to show you how minds somehow go in strange ways. Somebody in the congregation said to me, um, I just want to be happy. And I have no idea why that triggered off for me a scene when Larry Wilson and Richard Parker are called, this is from a movie, by the way, and if any of you have seen this movie, you're probably thinking, what is the Reverend Doctor watching a movie like this for? Because I watch movies like this. They're called into work on Saturday morning on the weekend before Labor Day weekend, and it's awful out, it's hot, it's in New York City, and Larry says to Richard, I've had it, we're going to the beach. The next scene you see on top of a rooftop in Manhattan, there's a little pool about this big, about like this. They're sitting in these old chairs, and he says, I, 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 and he gets, he gets up and he slides across the tar paper, which is now melting. His shoes get stuck. He gets out of his shoes. His socks are now in the tar. He sits down in this little pool. He says, I am so unhappy. Now, why I went from a congregate saying I'm happy to Richard Parker and Weekend at Bernie's, starting out with, I am so unhappy. He squirts himself with hot water from a hose to the Kingston Trio. Now, I don't know if you ever, now I was going to sing this, but I thought it might look ungainly if I got thrown things at on tape here or a hook comes out and I get pulled out. Do any of you remember this very, very famous call? The um, maybe I can do a little bit of this. They're rioting in Africa. La 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 la. la. They're starving in Spain. La 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 la. They're hurricanes in Florida. La 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 la. And Texas needs rain. He. The whole world is festering with unhappy souls. The French hate the Germans. The Germans hate the Poles. Italians hate Yugoslavs. South African hate the Dutch. And I don't like anybody very much. <laughs> to that, folks, we go to, um, I don't know if you're aware of this. Out of all of this comes, I just can't believe this, the 2019 World Happiness Report. Now, all of this comes in the space of 24 hours. Now, I don't know how this stuff works, but somebody makes a comment to Weekend at Bernie's, to the Kingston Trio, to a World Happiness Report. And it turns out we are the, almost at the worst ever. We scored the worst ever. Uh, oddly enough, Finland comes in first. Now, if you look, it, yeah, if you look at the sheet here, now my first cousin, and I become very close. His wife is from Finland. They watch this from Munich, by the way. They watch these, so I have to be very careful. With all due respect, I'm tired of Finland, and I'll tell you why. Most people have no concept of where we are in the real world here in this county. Forget the rest of the country in this county. If you add up North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming, there's 2.25, that's three states. Do you see the population of that? Yeah, and they've got six senators between. Yeah, all right. And then you look at the number of square miles, 245,000 square miles between those three states. Miami-Dade County, however, 
has a mere 2,400 miles and 2 million, do you see that folks? That's nuts. No wonder nobody's happy. Meanwhile, Finland, and by the way, I looked up, I'm 2% Finnish and how that happened, I have no idea. Um, Finland has 136, 30,000 square miles and only 5 million people. 91% of the people are Finnish. How many ethnic groups do we have in Miami? How many? And how many people in Florida, by the way, I don't know if you're aware of this, in Florida alone, 200, first, 200 languages are the first language spoken, not English, in the state of Florida. Look this stuff up. Yes. Yes. So, you know, it's nice when you've got nobody around and you're all the same. To be happy, of course you're going to be happy, unless they have a guaranteed income. I'd be happy too. Meanwhile, so I decided to ask, all right, what's happening? This? So I um, asked people on Facebook, asked you all in an email, and then I asked my students. And I said, I want you to put three things that make you happy and three things that don't make you happy. And here are the results. And I thought they were interesting. Uh, what makes people happy in college, what makes adults happy is very, very much the same, which I was interesting to see. <laughs> Friends. Family, pets in college, travel. Travel's a big one in college. Food is a big one in college. And music. Um, I don't know how the hearing is going to be when college students hit my age, but everybody's got white things plugged in their ears, and I have no idea what the long-term effect of that is, but they're all in another world, and they're listening to music. Music is big. What does not make you happy if you're in college? Liars was the number one list. Number two was bullying. Bad grades, rude people, homework, failing, and people full of themselves. That came in very big, too. Now, what makes adults happy? Family, children, grandchildren. Grandchildren, especially because you've gotten into the teen years. I always have to remind uh, parents that when your kids get to be teens, this is there's no getting out of this. There is no getting out of teen. You were a teen once, I remind parents. So simply, this is life going in full circle. What you did to your parents is now being done to you. It's the way it is. And I get these nasty looks. Anyway, moving along. Family, children, grandchildren, friends, pets. Oddly enough, husbands get mentioned, but wives or girlfriends did not. Which I thought was really interesting. I'm not sure why that was. Music, acts of kindness. Um, adults don't like liars. Disrespect hate, bullies, intolerance, abuse of any kind, illness, bad drivers, uh, nasty people, and loneliness. Very similar in many ways. I did have college students put down that some did not like tomatoes. Several put they didn't like men. And one person didn't like ants in his food. Don't even ask me. I have no idea. <laughs> happiness. All right, moving right along here. So I did some more research, and I thought, all right, what is it with happiness? What does the internet have to tell us? And I was found, looked up Goodreads, which is a very, very popular uh, thing, has 341 quotes on unhappiness. So I thought I would ask some basic questions. And I think these are questions. We're talking about happiness. People want to be happy. Um, I thought I would ask, uh, all right, what, what, what are contributing factors? And the experts now have come out with this whole thing on happiness, this 2019 report. And three things that they mentioned contribute to happiness. And I don't know if you've thought about this, but the one I should know, but surprise, number one is your government. The way a group is governed politically has a great deal of effect. You might not know it on the way you feel happy. And I got to thinking about that, and that's true. That's absolutely true. Uh, I promised that I would never mention politics here. I should have never used the word ne men uh, mention uh, never. But I will say that uh, our present administration has caused extreme tension, whether you're for or against. But the amount of unhappiness on both sides is, is, is very, very palpable. Uh, what is your pro-social behavior? How do you act towards others? It affects your happiness. I'll get into that in a moment. And social media. Social media has killed the United States. One of the reasons I'm so big, and I was talking to the board about this, uh, about doing, I know this sounds simple, 
about doing handmade, for instance, a birthday card. That sounds, oh, Kevin, that sounds so like what? What is, people are tired of being texted. Who talks to people today? This actually happened in class. This is no joke. One student was here, and another student was here, and I said to student A, are you texting student B? Yes. I said, student B is three feet away. Then I won't use the words I used. I said, the essence of what I said was, put the phone down, get up, <laughs> off, and go talk to. I won't tape here. I won't tape that. Yes. So I, this is what I said. And I said, how many of you text your friends when they're like two feet away? Did it ever dawn in anybody to like put the phone down and go over and like say, hello? And I got these looks like, really? Hmm. I mean, social media, people don't talk to each other anymore. They really, really, really don't. And I was thinking about, well, you can speak up. What? I live in the state, and yet I as well text, but I talk in person more. Good. You realize you're rare. Good for you. Well, somebody's a prophet in our midst. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, my college kids don't. So uh, hopefully you're, you're going to be a, a new generation that has learned that it's, you need more balance. Kids don't, they, they, they text everywhere and have music in their ear, social media. Um, I get to, I tell students, if you're upset about something, call me, talk to me, or come see me in office hours. I'm there every day. Can't we just text? Talking and I, and I thought, texting. yes, I know. That's exactly what they said. It's hard to talk to me. And I said, okay, but maybe this is a skill you need to learn. Okay, um, some thoughts about happiness. Do most people really know what makes them happy? I thought it absolutely fascinating when I said to my students, write down three things real quickly, what makes you happy, everybody froze. And so people say, I want to be happy. Yeah, but do you know what really makes you happy? And I'm serious, that is a, that is a real question. Do you really know what makes you happy? Uh, secondly, there is a big difference between fleeting happiness. Ah, I'm happy. I'm glad you're happy. That's sweet. That's nice. But there's a difference between fleeting happiness whee, versus, uh, you know, something that's sustainable. And I think we get this fleeting happiness like, ah, and their feelings really good. I like to feel like that all the time. That's not physically possible. But people get confused between a fleeting moment of feeling good all over versus what is a in-depth, sustainable happiness. Am I making sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. So um, then I throw down here, what are realistic and unrealistic expectations? And I learned a long time ago, what kills human beings is having unrealistic expectations. Is it realistic to expect you're going to be happy all the time? And yet I get this all the time. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I say, well, do you look, it falls out of the air, just like pixie dust. You've got running around people and pixie dust making you happy. It doesn't happen like that, which got me into the gets. So I did some more reading and said that to get sustainable happiness, you've got to do yourself something to prepare for happiness. There are things you have to do to prepare yourself to be accepting of happiness. Or put it another way, things could be making you happy, but you're not prepared for it. It's like, um, it's like uh, let me give you a, a, a parallel idea. People say, There's, I, I don't sense anything divine. I say, have you ever allowed yourself to look around and see for a moment what's out there? Have you seen flowers? Have you seen trees? Have you, have you enjoyed uh, the joy of your pet? Have you enjoyed, these are things all the time. I think the divine speaks to everybody all the time, but we're so busy, so agended, so social media and stuff, we don't see any of the stuff. And I was thinking a classic example that I, I go down 104th to get home. And I was looking one day at all the palm trees, and I almost got run over. And I thought, okay, you can't enjoy the stuff around you, even when you're, we've got loads of beautiful foliage in Miami, but you can't dare look at it because there's so much traffic, you'll get run over if you do. But my point is the same thing with happiness. We may be so out there doing so much that happiness could be staring us in the face and we wouldn't have a chance to experience and enjoy it. So I have some gets. This is how you get prepared to enjoy happiness. According to the experts, number one, get outside. This sounds very old. I grew up on an island. We were outside all the time. Outside all the time. 
There are marvelous places to get outside in Miami. There really are. Most people are inside. Even when it's nice weather, they're inside. Uh, this is a good, uh, by the way, let me digress and say, this is a good reason why you should have a dog. Yes. Your dogs get you out. <laughs> the cardiologist said to me, how long do you think you've been walking dogs? Well, we totaled it up 26 years in a row. And he said, well, do you miss a day? I said, the dogs have to go. He said, what if it's raining? I said, what does that have to do with anything? The dog has to go. So if you go out in the driving rain, I said, well, who else is going to take the dog out? <laughs> so the dogs go. The dogs go. And he said, well, that's better than going to the gym because most people go to the gym, then they stop going to the gym, then they go and they don't. He said, so you go out, how many miles a day do you walk? I said, roughly about two. I said, a little bit less now. He said, so every day for 26 years you've been getting out. And I thought, yeah. And I thought, well, part of that is I see stuff. I actually take time to look at things. And so getting outside is a big deal, preparing yourself to get. There was a public service campaign in Denmark about 20 years ago that basically said, take your dog for a walk, even if you don't have one. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Get out, get out. Number two, get exercise. Get exercise. That's another nice thing about having it. You get out, you have to walk. Get some exercise. Number three, get grateful. I have never seen as many ungrateful people as I've noticed in my general life about people I meet. Uh, I will not have to be careful how I do this. Um, sometimes people are in situations, I'm trying to be very politically correct, where there is wonderful things staring them in the face and they're not even grateful for that. Now, one of the things I get asked, for, in for instance, is, why are you still teaching? I said, why would you not? I am surrounded by 18, 19, and 20 year olds, loaded with ideas, loaded with nonsense, loaded with energy. The energy alone is like getting a fresh shot of adrenaline every day. They have given me more ideas to things to see culturally, musically. I have a kind of a thing in my class. I'll give you the academics. You give me the stuff on Netflix, the stuff on culture, the stuff on this. So you're going to keep me up to date on things. And so the stuff that you can learn, why would you not? You've got great opportunities to learn from a totally different generation who sees things totally differently. So you're up to date on some stuff. I think it's a marvelous thing to be grateful for. And I see a lot of people in all kinds of professions that rather than being grateful for what they have, complain and feel entitled. I said, you should be entitled for what? You should be entitled to be grateful for the people you have a chance to work with. Number four, get helping others. One of the keys of being able to appreciate happiness is when you help others. Pro-social behavior. How do you help others? How do you think of others? Do you do one thing for somebody once in a while that gets you outside of yourself, not because you have to, but because there's something that speaks from within inside you? You take care of others. Now, some of you take care of your moms. Some take, you, some take care of relatives. Some of you have friends that you see. Getting outside of yourself to think of somebody else is essential to prepare for happiness. Uh, get time with loved ones. I can't tell you how many times I've heard over the years in the ministry, I only wish I would have spent time with. It's too late. You all are young. You all are very, very young in this group here. Yes, all of you. All of you. Everybody here. Yes. Um, there's lots of time to spend with loved ones. And getting prepared for happiness is spending time with loved ones. Get unaddicted to social media. Taking time to talk. You're already on the right track. You said you use some social media, but you talk more to your friends than you do texting and stuff. You're already there. Okay. You're already there. You're already there. I know I know that Grant, for instance, Grant's in all kinds of extracurricular activity. We has to talk to people. Um, so getting out there and talking and spending time. And finally, um, this is going to sound very, very corny. But I think going to a small faith community is very essential, too. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care if it's a mosque, a synagogue, if it's a church, if it's a fellowship, whatever you do. There is something essential about actually saying hello to people. 
You know, you come to a place like All Souls, you say hello to people. You talk to people. You have a chance to, 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 say, to, to, to do things together. For those of you who are watching this, we are making this poster. We have to make hands. That's a joy. It would glue all over the place, glitter all over the place. It was a chance to talk to one another. Something simple. And simple things today are hard to come by. Hello? How are you? Actually looking somebody in the face and talking, and you can do that. Whatever your group is that meets, that has a higher purpose, meeting with people that you can see and talk to, I think is essential. For instance, nobody here asks for anything from you. Nobody has an ulterior motive. It's just to be here. And what a, what a joy that is. So if you want to be happiness, you have to be prepared for it. You have to do some getting. Prepare the moment. Yeah, fleeting happiness is wonderful. I love to be out there too, and have, but I like a deeper happiness. A happiness that lasts and can be renewed. And to be renewed, you have to do things in return to set yourself up. So my wish for everybody here as we get into the holidays to take time to remember what abides with us takes time to get out there to get doing it. May you be happy.